So in this video, we are going to talk about adding mixed numbers. If you would please open your workbook to either page 109 or you might be 117, depending on which workbook you have. And I'm going to start with this problem number two as an example, so you can fill it in here as we go along. I'm going to be doing it on my whiteboard. So we have two... So we have two and one fifth plus three and one half. So the same rules apply here adding mixed numbers as it did when we were adding um, regular fractions. So we have to have our denominator the same in order to add them together. So I'm going to come over here and find a common denominator. So I'm going to start by listing out my fact, uh, excuse me, my multiples of 2 and 5. So I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 5, and 10. And I see that my first one they have in common is this 10. So that's going to be my common denominator. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write my 2. The whole number will stay the same. But I'm going to change these into equivalent fractions that have 10 as the denominator. So when I create equivalent fractions, I'm saying what can I multiply by 5 to get 10? And that's 2. So whatever I do to the denominator, I also have to do to the numerator. So now I have 2 and 2 tenths. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to say, what can I multiply by 2 to get 10? And that's 5. So if I multiply the denominator by 5, I have to do the same thing to the numerator, which is 5. Now I'm just going to add them together. I'm going to first add my whole numbers together. 2 plus 3 is 5. Then I'm going to add my fractions together. So remember when we add fractions together, we keep the denominator the same. That doesn't change. We only add the numerators. So 2 plus 5 is 7. So my final answer is 5 and 7 tenths. And I know that's in simplest form because there's nothing that I can divide into 7 that I can also divide into 10. So if you would flip the page now, please, and look at problem number seven in your workbook. So this one is similar in that we are still adding mixed numbers, but we're going to see at the end that there's a little bit, it's a little bit different at the end um, on how we write our answer. So I'm going to start by doing the same thing. I'm going to find the least common multiple, which is going to be my uh, common denominator. So I'm just starting by writing out some multiples until I find one that they have in common. And I see here that they have 15 in common. So that's going to be my, my denominator that I'm going to use. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to rewrite these fractions to have a denominator of 15. So I multiply 5 by 3 to get 15. So that means I have to multiply the numerator by 3. And here I'm going to multiply this 3 by 5 to get 15, which means I have to multiply the numerator by 5. Okay, so then I'm going to add. So I'm going to start by adding my whole numbers. 1 plus 2 is 3. My denominator will stay the same. And I'm going to add my numerators. 12 plus 5 is 17. Now, this should look kind of weird to you because 17 fifteenths is an improper fraction. 
and we don't want to leave it like that. We want to put our answer in simplest form, which means that we're going to need to change 17 fifteenths into a mixed number. So we remember that 17 fifteenths means 17 divided by 15. So if I do this over here on the side, 15 will divide into 17 one time, 1 times 15, and I subtract, and I'm left with 2. So that means 17 fifteenths is equal to 1 and 2 fifteenths. But here's the part you got to remember. This is what 17 fifteenths is equal to. But let's not forget that we also have this three whole number that we need to add into it. So our final answer is going to be this one and two fifteenths plus our whole number, which is three. So if we say three plus one and two fifteenths, that gives us four and two fifteenths. So this is our answer in simplest form. And again, we changed 17 fifteenths into a mixed number, which was one and two fifteenths. But we had to remember we still had these this three these three holes that we needed to add to the one. So that's how we got four and two fifteenths. Okay. Let's do one more example together. Let's look at the next page, problem number eight. So that is three and five twelfths plus one and two thirds. So I'm going to go ahead and find my common denominator. So I'm writing out the multiples of my two denominators. And the first one they have in common is 12. So I'm going to come over here and rewrite my fractions to have a common denominator so I can add them together. So this one already has 12 as its denominator, so I can just keep that numerator the same. Over here, I've got to change this 3 into a 12. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 4, because 3 times 4 will give me the 12, and whatever I do to the denominator, I also need to do to the numerator. So then when I add these together, I'm going to add the whole numbers together, which is 4. And then 8 plus 5 is 13. And I keep my denominator the same, which is 12. So immediately you should be seeing, oh no, 13 twelfths is not in simplest form because that is an improper fraction. So we need to change this 13 twelfths into a mixed number. So 13 twelfths, remember that means 13 divided by 12. So when I do that, I can say 12 divides into 13 one time. And times 12 is 12, and I subtract and I get 1. So that means 13 twelfths is equal to 1 and 1 twelfth. Okay, so 13 twelfths is a mixed number, is 1 and 1 twelfth. But don't forget, we also have this 4 that we've got to add to it. So that gives us a total of 5 and 1 twelfth.